Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and in my previous class, we have understood the term quasi-contract in detail. We learned the source of this particular term. We understood the dictionary meaning of quasi-contract. We also understood the term quasi-contract in contract law. Then we also learned who used this term for the first time and in which case law. All of that in my previous video and this is my second video on quasi-contract and the last video which is on types of quasi-contract. Now under contract law section 68 to 72 that is five important sections are discussing about different types of quasi-contract and we are going to learn them in detail through this presentation. Why to waste time? Let's try understand which are those five sections. Five sections which are formulating five important types of quasi-contracts. Now I'm going to discuss them with beautiful illustrations and case laws. Section number 68 discusses about supply of necessary goods to incapable persons and section number 69 discusses about lawful dues paid by the interested party. Section number 70 discusses about person enjoying benefit of the gratuitous act and section number 71 discusses about finder of goods. And finally, section number 72 discusses about goods or anything delivered by mistake or coercion. Now, let's learn one by one with illustration and case laws. The first section, that is section number 68, discusses about claim for necessary supply to person incapable of contracting or on his account. Now, while discussing the essentials of contract, we have understood that the person should be capable of contracting. But there are few personnel who are not capable of contracting. For example, minors or person of unsound mind or persons disqualified by law, all of them are incapable of contracting. Now, if someone provides them the necessities of life, like giving food or shelter, which are very necessary for such people, and later if they want to reimburse from the property of such incapable person, that is possible as per section 68 of Contract Act. That is what we are discussing under supply of necessities to a person who is incapable of contracting. Now there is a beautiful illustration where there is one person by name B who is a lunatic. If there is anything supplied by Mr. A to such lunatic person or his wife or children, those necessities which are supplied by A can be reimbursed by selling the property of B. That is how you need to understand. But you need to ensure that whatever supply is made, that is for the necessaries of life. That is very, very important. If you are supplying some crazy things, then they will not be considered as necessary. And that is what held in the case of Nash versus Inman. In this case, a miner bought 11 fancy waistcoat from Mr. Nash. Now, it is Nash to decide whether such coats are essential for life. Now, one cloth can be an essential for life, but if someone is giving love and fancy waistcoat, that is not essential or necessary for life. Now, that is what decided in this case law and Nash got nothing. That is how you need to understand supply of necessities. And there are many case laws where it was decided that the expenditure made for the celebration of Diwali festival or the expenses made for marriages, all those were considered as necessities of life because these are part of our life. Now, that is what you need to remember whenever you are discussing section number 68. You need to know how exactly to segregate what is a necessity for life, what is over and above necessity. Once you understand that, section 68 can be understood completely. The second section, that is section number 69, discusses about reimbursement of person paying money due by another in payment of which he is interested. Now, there is a lot of English. Don't worry on that English, I will explain it with a simple illustration. Imagine there is one Mr. A and one Mr. B. A is owner of particular house and B is the tenant. Now in the rental agreement, it is very clearly mentioned that whatever rent B is paying to A includes the monthly rent, the electricity charges, the water charges and all other maintenance. Now one fine day when B was sitting at his home, few electrical department guys come to home and try remove the main fuse or electricity connection to that particular house. Now B asked, why are you removing this? Because B is the interested party. He wants the electricity facility. So the electricity department guys say, the owner of this particular house has not paid the electricity bill. Now 
Just because A has not paid the bill, they are going to remove the electricity connection and B is going to be impacted as B is the interested party or B is the one who is going to get impacted. He says that I will make the payment and he makes all the dues clear and he informs to Mr. A. Now, what is the liability of Mr. A? Mr. A has to repay all those money to Mr. B because A is the one who was supposed to make that payment. B made the payment because he is only interested party and if there was any disconnection, he was the one who is going to face the impact. So he made the payment. Finally, the liability comes on Mr. A and A has to make all those payments made by B. That is what section 69 discusses about. I have given two case laws here. The first being Excel versus Partridge, which goes along with the illustration. And the second one is Abid Hussain versus Ganga Sahi. Please read the facts and that will help you in exam. And if you quote these two case laws, that is sufficient as far as section 69 is concerned. The section 70 discusses about obligation of person enjoying benefit of non gratuitous act. And there is a simple illustration given in the act itself, which says, a. A trademan leaves goods at B's house by mistake. B treats the goods as his own. He is bound to pay for the same. Now, A has left the goods by mistake. He was not intended or he never wanted to give it all those goods to Mr. B or whosoever gratuitously. He just forgot and by mistake he left it. Now, if B is utilizing it in whatever way he wants to use it, then he becomes liable or he comes into an obligation to pay to Mr. A. That is what 70 is all about. Where a person lawfully does anything for another person or delivers anything to him, not intending to do so gratuitously and such other person enjoying the benefit thereof, the latter is bound to make compensation to the former in respect of or to restore the thing so done or delivered. Now, if he is used, he has to pay for that. If he has given to someone, he has to bring it back and restore. And if he is already delivered, he has to bring it back or he has to pay for it. That is all about section 70. And the case law for that is Damodar Muralidhar versus Secretary of State for India, where a village was irrigated by a tank. The government effected certain repairs to the tank for its preservation and had no intention to do so gratuitously for the zamindars. Now the zamindars enjoyed the benefit thereof. So it was held that they are liable to contribute also because it was not a gratuitous act by the government. It was for the benefit of zamindars. So they were liable to pay the amount. That is what under the section 70 we will see. The next section that is section number 71 is really interesting which brings a quasi contract between the person who has lost the good and the person who has found the good. Now imagine if you are walking on a road and you find a watch, beautiful watch, you are picking it. The moment you pick it, there is a contract between you and the person who has lost it. That is what we discuss under section number 71, which is all about responsibility of finder of goods. Now, if a person who finds goods belonging to another and takes them into his custody, in that case, he is subject to the responsibility as equal to Bailey. Now, what is Bailey? To understand Bailey concept, you can go to my playlist, which is contract law 2, where I have discussed all the rights and duties of Bailey. You can understand the concept there. But to brief you, what are the rights of the finder of goods and duties of finder of goods? I'm bringing in few important sections from contract law 2. Now, there are three important rights and four important duties with the finder of goods. The first right being sell the goods. Section 169 discusses about selling the goods under three different circumstances. One, the finder of goods tried to find the owner, but he is unable to find the owner even after reasonable diligence. In that case, he can sell the goods. Second one, he found the owner, but he refuses to take it. In that case, he can sell the good. And finally, if he is spending to the level of two thirds of the actual value of the goods to repair or something else, in that case, he can sell the goods. These are the three important circumstances where he can sell the goods under section number 169. The second right is right to sue for reward. If there is any reward to that particular goods announced by the owner, in that case, he can ask for the reward as per section number 168, not ask, he can sue for reward. 
and finally he got the right to lean that means he can keep it with him these are the three important rights of the finder of goods now there are four important duties of finder of goods first being find the whereabouts of the owner he has to try search for the real owner that is the first duty second one he has to take care of that good that he has found third one he should not mix those goods with his own goods and the final one is he should not use such goods for his personal purpose these are the four major duties of finder of goods section 72 discusses about liability of person to whom money is paid or thing delivered by mistake or under coercion now this is a very interesting thing where i will start explaining with an illustration imagine there are three persons a b and c now a and b has to give rupees 100 to mr c and one fine day a goes and pay this 100 rupees but b is not aware now b comes and pays 100 rupees to c again in that case it is a payment made by mistake because he was not aware that a has already made that particular payment in that case c has the liability to pay back that particular amount to mr b that is what we are understanding from section 72 now a mistake or coercion where a person to whom money has been paid or anything delivered by mistake or under coercion must repay or return it it can be by mistake or it can be because of coercion also these are the two important aspects you need to remember when you are discussing section number 72 as far as the term coercion is concerned we don't have any confusion because we had detailed discussion on coercion when we were discussing free consent for which i have a independent video whereas when it comes to mistake mistake is discussed in different ways in different laws we always treat mistake of fact and mistake of law in different ways under different laws but as far as section 72 is concerned mistake of fact or mistake of law both are treated as mistake that is one important aspect you need to remember which was held in both the case laws that is Kausti versus state and Banaras versus Kanayalal in both of these cases it was held that it doesn't matter whether it is mistake of fact or mistake of law a mistake is a mistake as far as section 72 where the quasi contract will get created with that i am concluding this particular class i will come up with a new topic in my next class thank you so much for watching me please subscribe if you are yet to subscribe my channel please like share and comment my videos all the very best for whatsoever purpose you are watching my videos and thanks again